Welcome to the second episode of the Fluid Simulation series, Federico here. This is a series of videos where we explore the concepts and the math behind fluid simulation techniques. Before we start, the series of videos was very much inspired by this awesome tutorial on fluid simulation by the Max Jitterbug channel, I encourage you to check it out. I wanted this next video of the series to be about divergence, but I think that before we dive into that, it's useful to take one step back and revisit the concepts of derivatives and how we used it in the gradient video. In that video we didn't see the mathematical formula for a 2D gradient, so let me show it now. And let's break it down. This reverse triangle here indicates the gradient operator and it's called nabla or del f of x and y is the function that fills our scalar field. It takes us inputs to variables and gives us output a single scalar number. So the left side of the formula means the gradient of function f with variables x and y is equal to, on the right side we have the partial derivatives of f. Partial derivative of f on x and partial derivative of f on y. As you can see, the two operations are separated by a comma, which denotes that the output is a vector, with two components. In fact, the gradient field is a grid containing a vector in each cell. This is the symbol that indicates a partial derivative. As we hinted in the previous video, a partial derivative is the derivative of a multivariable function, which is a function with multiple inputs, like for example f of x and y. They are two inputs, so a multivariable function. It is calculated by taking the derivative of the function for each of its variables, each time maintaining all the other variables constant. So, what is a derivative? Let's start by seeing the mathematical formula. This means the derivative of f of x is equal to the output of f for x plus a distance h minus the output of f for x, all divided by h. The part lim h approaching zero means that we calculate this formula with the distance h equal to a number very close to zero. The result of this operation will give us the instantaneous rate of change of the function at the point x. So a derivative is an operation that we apply to a function and it tells us the instantaneous rate of change of that function with respect to its variables at any given point in the graph. A practical example of derivatives in the real world will be the velocity of a moving object. The velocity is the rate of change of the position of an object at any given point in time, so it can be seen as the derivative of the position with respect to time. If the position of a car will be described as f of t, to get its instantaneous velocity, we will take its position at t and at t plus an infinitesimal quantity of time. Then we subtract these two values and we find the instantaneous velocity. Let's now visualize the concept graphically. Let's for example take the function y equal x squared, which gives us this parabola. What is the change in the output of the function between the point x1 and x2? If we take a line that passes between these two points, with distance h between each other, the slope of that line, which is how steep the line is, will be the average rate of change between these two values of the function. So what happens when we bring the x-coordinates x1 and x2 very close to each other by reducing the distance h to almost zero? The line that connects those two points becomes the tangent to the parabola. And the slope of that line is now not anymore the average rate of change, but the instantaneous rate of change of the function, which is exactly how much that function is increasing or decreasing at that point. So the derivative of the function for a certain input can be visualized as the slope of the tangent line to the function at that input. That's how we can graphically visualize a derivative. Let's now see how we can calculate and visualize a derivative in max MSP. So we got our point here on the x-axis and our distance h. The function we are using is the one for the parabola, so f of x is equal to x squared, and f of x plus h will be equal to x plus h squared. So let's now proceed to calculate the slope of the tangent, which is to say the derivative of that function. So let's first calculate the f of x, so this will be x squared, and then let's calculate f of x plus h. So first we need to sum x plus h, and then we need to square that. Let's add a trigger bank float, so we are sure that when we change our distance, we will also trigger the calculation of f of x plus h. 
from x of x plus h we now need to subtract f of x. We can again use trigger bang f to be sure to trigger this operation every time we change either one of those two numbers. And then we need to divide by h. We can use the receiver here. Great, so this will be our slope. Let's see if this works. As you can see, I made a mistake because this slope is actually negative, but it should not be negative when a line is going upward. If it will go downward, uh, the slope will be negative, but since the line will go up, this should be positive. And my mistake was that I inverted those two factors. We should subtract f of x from f of x plus h, so we actually don't need the trigger bang f. And now should be correct. Now, to check if this worked, we can draw our line that intersects those two points and will transform in the tangent as h approaches zero. So to draw that line, we can use a, a JIT gen and GGL mesh. So let's create a JIT matrix with three plane, float 32, and only two cells because we only need two points for a line. Let's create a JIT gen, GGL mesh. Let's go inside JIT gen. Now the equation for a line is this one. Y is equal to m multiplied by x plus b. Now m will be the slope of the line. So to draw a line we need to get it some x coordinates. Uh, we can multiply those by 2, create a vector 3. This will be the x coordinates of our lines. As you can see the line appeared here as yellow. And then we need to create some parameters. One will be the slope, which will set to zero. Then we need to have uh, our f of x, which will be b. So in the equation of a line, b is where the line intercepts the y-axis. So if our x will be zero, the line will the intercept the y-axis at point f of x. And then we also need x as a param, which will be the x coordinate of f of x, because we need to offset our line on the x axis so that it passes through the point x f of x. So let's create these parameters in our patch. So let's say let's prepare the slope, this will be the slope, this is f of x, we can create a little sender, and then prepend x, this will be our x input variable, connected to JIT gen. Inside gen, we need first to multiply m for x, so our slope for the x coordinates. So we can do that by multiplying the x coordinate to our slope. And then we need to sum to that b, which will be f of x. And then we need to offset our x coordinates for our line for our x parameter. It seems that it has worked. So if we reduce h to very, a number very close to zero, we can see this line becoming the tangent line to the parabola. Let's now talk about how we use the derivatives in the context of the gradient in max. We calculated the gradient considering the values in the cells of the scalar field to be the outputs of a function f of x and y, where x and y are the coordinates of the cells of the 2D matrix. To calculate the partial derivatives, which is to say the derivative for the change on x and the derivative for the change on y, we use the method of numerical differentiation. Since we are working with a discrete set of data and not an infinite one like we would have in an abstract math environment, we need to use the difference from the data that we got to calculate the derivatives. This is called numerical differentiation. In a pure math context, we will use analytical derivatives, where we solve the derivative using some specific algebraic rules. When dealing with a collection of data instead, we are better off using numerical differentiation. We use the central difference method of numerical differentiation, which means that we took the difference between the cells before and after or above and below the current cell, and then divided by the total distance between the cells. Other possible methods are forward difference and backward difference, but the central difference method gives us the best approximation. Let's now see how we implemented the partial derivatives using the numerical differentiation method in MAX in the previous video. In a discrete grid of cells, like a jitter matrix, the minimum distance we can have between cells is 1, so our distance h is the number 1. The nearest peaks operator means that we are getting the values from different cells as the current one. In fact, we are getting the cells before and after and above and under, then we calculate the approximative derivative using those values by following the formula. So this is f of x plus h with y uh, remaining constant. As you can see, the input coordinate y here is set to zero. And here is uh, f of x minus h. And here we have for the y, f of x and y plus h. And here we have f of x and y minus h 
Then we subtract those two values here, which correspond to this part in the formula, the two, the two functions for the different values subtracted. And then we divide by 2, because 2h, it will be 2 multiplied by 1, which is 2, and this becomes the x component of our 2d vector, and this becomes the y component of our 2d vector. And this is it! I hope this helped clarify what we did in the previous video and should help us understand the next steps in the study of the fluid simulation maths and algorithms. If you liked the video, please uh, put a like and subscribe, this really helps the channel. If you already are a subscriber, well, thank you a lot, this really helps. As always, you'll find the patches that I've used to explain the concepts in this video uh, on my Patreon. And thank you very much for following. I will see you in the next video. Have fun!